Good morning, friends. Welcome to Grandma's Kitchen. In today's episode, I'm gonna show y'all how to make roasted butternut squash soup. The idea for this soup was born from Grandpa's meandering garden. And I call it meandering because that is exactly what it does. It goes anywhere it chooses to go, all over the yard, and it gets to the point where we just have to pick and bring it inside and figure out what to do with it. If you're gonna be a serious cook, you have to make sure you've got some decent knives and a good sharpener. And I begin with any anything I'm cooking with this sharpener and this nice chopping knife. And it just takes a few little swipes this way and then a few this way. And then you're good to go. A lot of people think that it's a little daunting to peel a squash, but I'm gonna show you how to make it easy. Just cut both ends off. With your sharp knife, always remember to be very careful, and then stand it on its end. And I use this really useful little veggie peeler. This is what people use for carrots and apples and anything that's got a skin on it that you're trying to remove. And it really does a much easier, quicker job than if you were to use a paring knife. I've tried it that way before, it just is not very functional. Now that I've removed all the skin, I am ready to slice it lengthwise, which exposes the pulp and the seeds that are right in here. They're real easy to scoop out. Just get a spoon and dig them right out into your bowl. Now the next step is to just slice this into cubes While this is happening, my oven is preheating to 400 degrees, where I will put this in, tossed with olive oil and salt and pepper and a little garlic powder, and bake it for about 20 minutes. This is kind of a large squash. It'll make a, a good sized pot of soup. It'll easily feed a family of anywhere from four to six people. But there's only two of us, so one of my neighbors might get lucky, or I can freeze it. Okay, we're off to a good start. The hard part's done. And what I do from here is I drizzle all of this with a good quality extra virgin olive oil. I have a parchment paper lined cookie sheet. And I spread it out kind of evenly like this. Okay, give it a good dusting of cracked black pepper and your favorite kind of salt, any kind of salt will do. Some garlic powder, we'll finish it off. And then you pop it in an oven that's preheated at 400 degrees. While the squash is in the oven roasting, you can be working on the next step, which is to chop one medium to large sweet or yellow onion and put it into a pan on the stove with some olive oil that's getting preheated and you just saute it until it's translucent. It's going to take but just a few minutes to do that. 
then that'll be ready. It gives it an extra sweet flavor when you you cook it like that instead of just putting it into the soup raw. And in addition to the chopped onion, fresh garlic, about four of these large cloves chopped. Be careful not to turn the heat up too high because fresh minced garlic, it will burn very quickly. So it only needs about a minute or so in with the hot oil and onions, just until you see it caramelize just a little bit. Okay, so it's time to put the tender roasted butternut squash into the, the Dutch oven with the onions and the garlic. I love that sizzling sound. Now it's time to add two cups of chicken broth. You can use the kind that comes in the box at the store or the can. Um, I stewed a chicken earlier this week and saved the broth for this kind of thing. There you go. I'll just bring that to a little simmer. Stir it around. A couple of spices that really add a nice touch to butternut squash soup is, believe it or not, a couple of dashes of cinnamon and a few little dashes of nutmeg. Okay, I think we're about finished up here. I'm gonna add a cup of filtered water just to thin it a little bit. I don't want my soup to be too thick. And it cools it down just a little bit so that I can pick it up and move it over here to the final step where I will puree it with this kitchen tool that I call an immersion blender. It's a stick blender and it saves so much time. I can't believe that for years I would make something like this and actually pour it into a blender and then have to pour it back from the blender back into the pot and have to wash the blender. This just makes it so much easier. So this tool has two speeds, low and high, and I just use the low speed. And I use this hot pad here because the pan is hot and I tilt it a little bit and you have to make sure that it is immersed all the way down into the, the liquid because if you don't, it will splash everywhere. Sometimes you have to pick it up, do a little stir, and just hold it down in there. You just keep doing that until you don't see any more chunks in there. And if you like to have a few little chunks in there, just leave them. But I usually try to make it completely smooth and I believe this is ready to try. It's really good served hot with crusty bread and you can sprinkle toasted pepita uh, little seeds on top of it to give it a little, little topping, a little garnish. So it's time for the reward. We get to taste this delicious butternut squash soup. It's especially good in cool weather. Somehow, we have butternut squash soup in August on a very hot day, but we like soup all year round. Give it a nice little garnish. This is my toasted pepita seeds. Now it's time for the reward. We get to have a, our first taste of this delicious hot butternut squash soup. I hope you enjoy it as much as we do. Thanks for watching.